Really? I thought... I've never in my whole entire life done that. <gasps> Today we're having a look at the Zero GoGo R2 dual lens dash camera. This dash camera records video footage like a normal dash camera, but it also has a camera on the inside of the car. So this is actually really good if you drive a taxi, if you drive Uber, or if you drive Lyft. In addition to being dual camera, this dash cam also comes with a GPS so you can actually log the exact time and location of any incident or anything that happens and is recorded by this dash camera. So in this video I'm going to talk about what you get in the box, how I set this up for myself, and some of my overall thoughts now that I've been using this for a few weeks. Out of the box you get the GPS unit, it has adhesive so you can stick it either to the dashboard or the window. You get some tools for sticking or removing the dash cam if you ever need to do that. You get a really long mini USB cord that's hooked up directly to the cigarette lighter plug or it also comes with a shorter cord that you can plug directly into a USB charger. The dash camera itself is easily mountable and easy to rotate the cameras. The dash cam has a screen, so this helps so that you can instantly see the result of changing the view angle of the camera. Installation is pretty straightforward. It comes with a couple different mounting brackets, so you want to decide which one is better for the angle of your windshield. I also recommend moving your dash camera to different areas on the windshield to kind of find out what works best for you. Go ahead and turn on the dash cam when you do this so you can see what it's going to be like after you've installed it. So before mounting the dash camera, I also recommend that you turn it on and just get familiar with some of the menu settings and how some of the different view modes work. In the menu, you'll see different settings for image size, color, anti-shaking, capture mode, white balance, ISO, exposure, time and date stamp, quality and sharpness and there are some additional settings for helping you to format the SD card you can select the language you can set the time and date you can select the time zone and actually if you do this and you have it hooked up to the GPS it can automatically figure out the time and date for you you can also change the frequency for the video you can turn the beep sounds on or off you can set a screensaver and you can decide whether or not you want to timestamp your speed. Files are saved to the micro SD card in a really simple to understand way. The file for the footage of inside the car has the same name as the file name for the footage outside of the car, but it has the suffix of B, whereas the dash camera video has the A suffix. Once you're pretty familiar with your dash camera, I think you should go ahead and dismount it where you prefer. Personally, I like it closer to the bottom because this allows me to use a shorter cord and I don't have to do so much work getting it to go all the way along the windshield. So the things I like most about this dash camera are, for one, the video quality during the daytime is actually really good. I'm very happy with how crisp the video file is. And I think it also shows colors very well. Another thing I like is just how easy it is to get going. Once I set it up the first time, that was basically it. Uh, don't have to do anything with it. It will automatically turn on and off with your car and it will overwrite the files once you've filled up the SD card. So it's really easy to use. I'm also really impressed that it comes with a good GPS. This is something that I think all dash cameras should have. Overall, I think this is a really great dash camera. I definitely recommend it. I will go ahead and post a link in the description below. Thanks.